brothers from Fontana First Assembly, what a privilege right now that we have to gather together in the midst of this pandemic through online and, um, and, um, and in a wonderful heart that we can bless people through this media. Right now, I got a wonderful announcement. This Sunday, um, we're going to have our sanctuary open once again. Yes, this sanctuary uh, is going to be open through our service at 9.30. We're going to have a, a blessed service on, on the, on, over here in Fontana First Assembly. So I invite you, everybody is welcome. Come early because it's going to be a short service uh, and we're going to start at 9.30. 30 a.m. There's going to be procedures. They're going to check your temperature. They're going to be aligned. They're going to assign you a seat to, 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 to be there. But be ready to uh, experience the power of the Lord. If you are, if you have, uh, if you're struggling with situations, we would like to pray for you. We would like to embrace you and love you and, and tell you that the Lord is doing amazing things on the midst of this time. So believe on the Lord, believe on the Lord, believe on the Lord. And remember what the Bible says, for those who believe, nothing is impossible. So this Sunday, this, this Sunday at 9.30 a.m. right here on Fontana First Assemblies of God, 16580 San Bernardino Avenue in the midst of the epicenter of the revivals, the epicenter of the miracles of the Lord. We welcome you in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy Resurrection Day. This is the day where all of our dreams came true. The day where Jesus got up out of the grave and along with him getting up out of the grave, you came out of the grave too. I came out of the grave too. There's nothing better than the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the pinnacle of our faith. It is what we truly believe and what we long for the promise of God, and because of that, we want to raise a hallelujah in this place. I don't know about you, but I just feel like lifting up the name of Jesus. It's been a week where I've just wanted to be in the presence of God and just really feel his presence. And right now, I just think that you ought to raise your hands with us and lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Happy Resurrection Day. I will raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I will raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I will raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I'll raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me Oh, I'll raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I'll raise a hallelujah Louder than the other I'll raise a hallelujah, my weapon is a melody, oh, I'll raise a hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Praises are all from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. Oh, he's a hallelujah. With everything inside of me. I'll raise a hallelujah. Watch the darkness flee. Yeah. I'll raise a hallelujah in the middle of the 
mystery I'll raise a hallelujah Fear you lost your hold on me oh, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive hallelujah Lord, thank you Lord hallelujah Sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to your name, God. We lift you up. We raise your hallelujah in this place. We glorify your name in this place. We exalt your name in this place. We raise a hallelujah. We raise a hallelujah. We raise time with your hands up. I'll raise a hallelujah. What a wonderful time right now to 
to, to worship and to praise the Lord. And we are uh, excited of what the Lord is doing. But with a tender heart, with a, a, a heart of gladness and the joy we can give to the Lord. And you have right now the application, Give Plus, whatever you are in the United States or through our web page, uh, FontanaFirstAssembly.org. You can log in and you can give to the Lord. Time to offer, time to give to the Lord, time to be faithful for the Lord, time to give our tithes, our offerings, and the Lord will reward you. The Lord will do amazing things on your life. So whatever you are, you can give to the Lord through our application. And let me pray for your finances. I know that sometimes it's hard in the middle of this situation, of the uncertainty. People are saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm going to uh, do things things on the midst uh, of this situation. The money doesn't last the way that I want it. I, I want to tell you something. Believe on the miracles of the Lord and put God first. The Lord will do what he knows to do. I experienced myself already many times when we give a sacrifice of praise, when we give a sacrifice of offering, when we give with a cheerful heart. The Lord rewards our lives. So right now where you are, let's pray. Let, let, me, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know and understand, Lord, that you are our provider. You are our provider. You are the one, Lord, and who brings, Lord, the wealth, goods. You are bringing, Lord, money. You are bringing, Lord, what we need. You are the one who makes our gas tank, Lord, last longer. Our electricity bill go lower. Father, I know that you do it the way that you want to do it because you like to bless people. Father, right now, I ask, Lord, your blessing, your manna, your, your anointing, Lord. Lord, over every brother, every sister, Lord, and they will experience the, Lord, the, 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 the blessing, the prosperity that comes from you. Father, we ask that on the precious name of Jesus. You can give to the Lord with a cheerful heart. May the Lord bless you. Also, I have some great news. On Sunday, we are opening the doors to our church. And that is wonderful news. We've been having a parking lot service every Sunday, and it's been great. But now it's time to come inside the sanctuary, and everyone is welcome. We will start service at 9.30 sharp, so be here on time. Um, you will have, we will be practicing social distancing. Make sure you bring your mask. Make sure you come ready to worship and to receive the Word of God. And... If you need prayer, again, if you need prayer, this is the place to be. This is the place to be with others who love the Lord and who are seeking God. So I welcome you this Sunday. Come ready to hear a great word of the Lord. Amen. By his stripes, we are healed. By his Whoa! 
welcome everybody and it's an honor to be here tonight and I thank you for joining me and being here and I pray that the Lord speaks to your heart through his word tonight and I'm going to be reading from the book of Hebrews I'm going to be reading Hebrews 10 23 but first I'm going to begin with prayer Lord, I thank you, Father God, for your blessings, Lord. Thank you for being so good to us, Father God. Thank you for always being present, Lord. And I ask you tonight, Lord, I ask you that you are present in everyone's homes, on the radio, wherever, wherever someone is watching or listening in tonight, Father God. I pray that you are there, Father God, that you soften hearts and that you open hearts and minds, Lord, to receive your word, Lord. I pray this, Lord, in your sweet, sweet name, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we'll start with Hebrews 10, 23. And it says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful, and God is faithful. This verse is telling us to hold fast to our faith. And I looked up these two words because, you know, I, 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 like, I like to know what words mean. And hold fast, well, do I hold fast? What, it, what is it? And I looked up the meaning. The meaning of hold fast is to adhere, to stick firmly, to stick to, and to bond. And the first thing that came to my mind was, if you think of, now some of you might be too young, but, and I'm aging myself, but if you've ever seen the commercial of Crazy Glue back in the, I don't know, 80s or 90s, and the guy is crazy glued to this beam with his hard hat and he's dangling but he's not moving it is it is stuck it is um bonded together so that's that's what that word means to hold fast to bond together then i looked at the word wavering wavering this word means becoming weaker to hesitate to weave or to sway unsteadily. Let us look at this verse again. Let us hold fast to, let us adhere to, let us stick firmly to, let us bond to the confession of our hope without wavering, without becoming weak, without hesitating without weaving or swaying unsteadily. In Hebrews chapter 3, we are also reminded what happened to the Israelites when they, have, um, when they gave in to fear and doubt and unbelief. They didn't enter the promised land. The Israelites left Egypt with God on their side. He was leading them to the promised land, but they complained. They doubted God. They gave in to fear, and they didn't believe God's promise. They didn't hold fast. I can relate to some of these things that the Israelites were feeling, particularly when I have gone through a rough season. Can you relate? I have doubted. I have doubted if I was ever going to get out of whatever I was going through. Doubt crossed my mind, my mind. And I've had fear. I used to be a girl full of fear all the time. I feared everything. And I've had unbelief. And you say, but she's a Christian. Yes, but I'm also human. I'm also human, and thank God that he knows our hearts, and he knows us, and he's so gracious to us. Can you relate? Can you relate to these? This season that we are going through, that we are all living in right now, with so much uncertainty, with so much pain, 
so much loss can cause people to waver, to feel weak, to have fear, and to be tired. God doesn't say we will have no trials. The trials come, and sometimes they feel like they are never going to end. John 16.33 says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. God has overcome the world. And that's, where we, that's why we can have a cheerful, cheerful heart and have peace. Because he has overcome the world. But he says we will go through tribulations. In him, we will have peace. This is a promise. And what does the last part of Hebrews 10.23 say? For he who promised is faithful, and God is faithful to his word. He does not waver. He does not change his mind. He is faithful to his word. We will have trials. We will go through uncertain times. We will experience loss. We will go through many things. But if we don't waver... If we don't become weak, if we stick to, if we hold fast to his word and believe in him and his promises, we will have peace and victory because he has overcome the world. But how do we stay focused on God and hold fast to our faith? How do we do that? How do, we, how, do we, how do we keep our faith strong in God and his promises? How do we hold on to those promises without wavering? I'm going to tell you my truth. What's helped me get through some of these times. What's helping me get through this time right now. One is prayer. Prayer is a must. And not just little prayers. I'm talking about big prayers. That is what we need right now. Big prayers. Big prayers. Philippians 4, 6 tells us, and I have clung to this verse over and over and over. Because I have not just had one trial, I've had many trials. But this is my go-to verse. The word says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Right here, God is giving us directions. He says, be anxious for nothing. Don't worry. Don't worry. And that's easier said than done. But we must not worry. Sometimes we have to, you know, jerk ourselves a little bit. To remind us what God's word says. Then he tells us in everything by prayer and supplication. We can humbly come to the throne of God and plead to him and cry out to him with our troubles and our petitions. And guess what? He will hear us. He will hear us because he loves you. And he loves me. And he cares about us. Then he says, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. We can thank him in the midst of our trial. We can thank him for what he has done and for what he will do. Because see, we have to believe and we have to trust that he will send us victory. That he will get us out of our trial. And we can thank him in advance for that because he is a God of his word. Let us not be like the Israelites and forget what he has done. God gave them food every day. 
He didn't have, he gave them, sorry, he gave them manna and it was good. I read the other day that the manna tasted like honey. I don't know about you, but if I didn't have to cook and think about what the menu was and it was good, I would not complain. I'd be happy. I am so happy when my husband cooks. Hallelujah. <laughs> I am so happy. But they complained. They were not thankful for what God had done for them by taking them out of Egypt. They had forgotten. When my son was young, he had a heart condition. And one day he came to me and said, Mom, my heart hurts. It's beating so fast. And it was. You could literally see his chest just, you didn't even have to touch it. You could see his chest just go up and down so fast and hard. I thought his heart was going to come out. We took him to a specialist and he diagnosed him. He said, as he gets older, the symptoms will subside and they'll go away. Well, they didn't. It actually got worse as he got older. We took him back several times in the course of three years. We went back to the specialist on that third year. And again, the doctor said, he's fine. All the tests look normal. He's good to go. You know, there was nothing wrong with him. But we knew there was something wrong with him because we could see his chest pounding. We told him what our son was experiencing was not normal, but there was nothing we could do. As we were waiting for the doctor to give us our paperwork, my son said, I can make my heart beat fast. He said, do you want me to try? <laughs> See, my son had been dealing with this for so long that he knew the triggers that made his heart beat fast. He already knew what what made his heart pound like that. So he started jumping up and down. Because when he played basketball outside and he would jump or run, that would make his heart beat super fast. Then it happened. His heart started beating so fast. We called the nurse and the nurse saw what was going on. The nurse called the doctor and the doctor freaked out. <laughs> the doctor was out of control. He was like, nurse, nurse, come here now. And we're standing there like, okay, you know, what is going on? This is normal. We've been dealing with this for three years. The doctor yelled for the nurse. They put our son on this machine and we got the report. He did have a heart condition, and it was not what the doctor had diagnosed him with three years earlier. Our son needed a procedure done. The only doctor that could perform this procedure was in UCLA, and he was a busy doctor. It was going to be a while, but that created a problem for us, a huge problem. You see, my husband had lost his job of 20 years, a couple months before, and our insurance was going to run out. And there was no time to schedule an appointment and a procedure to get all this done in three weeks. We told the doctor the situation and we went home. And I remember we prayed and we cried for God to make a way for our son to be able to get this procedure. And guess what? <laughs> the very next day, the cardiologist called us and said, the specialist has an opening in his office in UCLA. He will see your son. He will move his appointments to get your son the procedure that he needs before your insurance runs out. Only God can do that. But God wasn't done there yet. He also, weeks later, and God puts the right people at the right time 
at the right place for you. I mentioned to my boss what was going on. And she said, hold on, you need insurance. <laughs> and I said, yes, I do. And she picked up the phone, didn't even ask me. She picked up the phone, made a phone call and said, you just need to go to the office and get insurance. This wasn't even open enrollment, guys. This was in the middle of the year, or I think it was the beginning of the year, somewhere around there, but it was after open enrollment. And we were able to have insurance. We didn't go one day without insurance. That's who God is. He's a God who cares. He's a God who takes care of his children. And he's a God who keeps his promises. God is good. Amen. He is so, so good. Let us not forget what God does for us. He is a God who cares for our needs, and prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. Don't ever stop praying. You might be one prayer away from the miracle. Don't ever stop praying. Number two, the Word of God. We need to be in the Word. Psalm 119.50 says, This is my comfort in my affliction, for your Word has given me life. God's Word is life. The Word of God brings us comfort in times of affliction. I know when my heart has been heavy, when I'm tired, and when I have felt discouraged and afflicted. And this might be you right now. Maybe everything going on right now is too much for you. And you are feeling worn out. You are not sure what to think. You're not sure who to believe or what to believe anymore. But don't let the enemy confuse you. Don't let him keep you so filled with worry and fear that you stay away from the Word of God. Don't let unbelief settle in. In our backyard, we have this palm tree, and it's big. It's a big palm tree. At the bottom of it, there is this hollow piece. It's just like, like someone took a, an ax and cut a piece out of it. And I wonder why it hasn't fallen. The fronds are big and they sway back and forth and they make a beautiful sound. And it reminds me of the ocean. You know why this palm tree is still alive and beautiful? And I'm not an expert in palm trees, but I believe the roots are deep in the ground. The roots are strong. This tree gets watered a lot. It is taken care of. I am not a palm tree expert, like I said. So it gives these clusters, and maybe one of you can tell me what they are, but it looks like, um, like a, grape, uh, you know, a grapevine coming down. But it's a cluster of balls, and I don't know what they are but it makes a mess. If they get on the ground, it just makes this horrible mess and we have to clean it up. So we have to remove them as soon as we see them getting bigger before they fall and make a mess everywhere. <laughs> you see, we need to remove all the stuff that will cause us to fall or mess with our thoughts. We need to cut it out. We need to cut off from all the things that are not feeding our soul. We need to stop depending on social media to make us feel good. There are posts that are feel good and there are posts that are from scripture and I am one, I will claim that I, I post scriptures and I post feel good posts, but guess what? They do not replace the Word of God. 
They are there to encourage you to go to the Word, but they do not replace the Word of God. They are there to encourage you to spend time with God. This is where we spend time with God, in His Word and in prayer. We need to stop to look to look to, we need to stop looking to the media for truth. We will not find it there either. You need to feed our hearts and soul with the word of life and truth. So we will stay strong and our hearts and our minds remain rooted in God. And even if we say, sway like that palm tree, we can remain strong and bonded to our faith in God. God's word is truth. He will never, ever. His word is, was true then, it is true now, and it is true. It is the same. His word does not lie to us. This is the truth. This is where we come to get comforted, where we come to get the truth, where we come to get solutions. The Word of God is alive and it gives us life. The media is not where we go. Social media is not where we go. They are not going to give us truth or direction or comfort. It is the Word of God where we can find hope, where we can find comfort. This is where we get to know God and have a relationship with Him. And this is where we get to know his promises. God promises to sustain us during our trials. Psalm 50, 15 says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. He will sustain us. And again, he says, you will have trouble but we will give him the glory every single time because he is a God who cares for us. He is a God of truth. Number three, three, be around other believers who are going to pour into you, who will be there for you when times are difficult to encourage you to have perseverance in your Christian walk. Who are going to speak truth to you, who will not sugarcoat the truth, who love you no matter what. My husband and I have been through some trying times. And you probably have or you probably are right now. And what has helped us so much in our church is the family we have here at church. Their prayers, their encouragement not to give up, to keep going, that God loves us, God loves our children. And I'm not saying that everyone needs to know your business. That's not what I'm saying. But just to know that you can call or that I can call our pastor that I can call someone from church and they will pray for me without, they don't need to know anything, but they will pray for me and I can get their advice. That is priceless. Right under Hebrews 10, 23, verse 24 and 25, it says, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore comfort each other and 
edify one another just as you also are doing. See, we are called to be with other believers. We are called to encourage each other and to assemble each other. And I can't wait for Sunday to come <laughs> so that we can be all in here praising God and hearing his word. So we need each other. We need each other for encouragement. We need the word of God and we need to get on our knees and pray. I'm going to close with this. If you are experiencing hurt, if you are overwhelmed, if you are experiencing anxiety, whatever is causing you to stay away from prayer, from the word, and from being around other believers, I encourage you to do these three things that I've shared with you tonight. If you say, but I've never been to church, I don't know what you're talking about. Use that prayer line to call. It will be an honor to help you and to pray with you and to get you started. I know it, it's easier said than done, but it can be done. Last night, I, I asked my friend to pray for me. <laughs> And she said, you'll be fine. Just speak your truth. Just two simple words. Speak truth. This is my truth. That prayer changes things. And that God hears us. He hears our prayers. He hears our petitions. And the word is life. The word is what keeps us keeps our faith going and our faith strong. And being around other believers, being around other people who know God and who are going to lift you up and who are going to encourage you, that is a good, good medicine right there. That is my truth. That is my truth. Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hold fast to this promise that you can find rest in him. Lord, I thank you for your word today, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that you are present, that you are God of truth, Father God, and I pray, Lord, I pray that we do not waver, Lord. I pray that, that whoever needs you right now, Lord, whoever is on the other side of this camera, whoever is, is listening, Father God, and is feeling anxious, Lord, I pray that you calm them. I pray, Father God, whoever is, is worried and tired, Father God, bring them peace and give them courage, Father God, and give them strength, O oh Lord. For those moms who, who are home right now and, and have the kids all day, Father God, give them strength, Father God. Give them strength, Lord. I pray for the elderly, Father God. I pray that you keep them safe and that you continue to encourage them, Lord. I pray, Father God, for, for the young adults, O oh Lord, and for the youth who are experiencing so much anxiousness right now, Father God. I pray for them, Lord. I pray that you calm their, their anxious nerves, Father God. I pray that you reveal your, your will to them, Father God. Reveal yourself to them, O oh Lord. I pray, Father God, for the people who are sick, Lord. I pray that you bring healing, Father God, healing to their bodies, Father God. I pray, O oh Lord, that you go with us this week, O oh Lord, and I thank you, Lord. I thank you for your word. I thank you for this time, O oh Lord. In your name, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. George, thank you for being with us. God bless you and have a blessed, blessed week.
God bless you.